Shabbos. I say just tell us the Jewish people are like a sheep among 70 wolves. Today, we could sense it tangibly in our life, not only because of what happened on October 7th in Israel, but the incredible amount of anti-Semitism that has spread throughout the world, not only amongst those who always traditionally hated us in the Middle East, but even Western countries are showing an incredible insensitivity to both the Jewish subjects and to the people of Israel. Uh, we're seeing anti-Semitism rife on social, me social media uh, in these terrible demonstrations. I just uh, yesterday saw a headline that, Israel, that Australia is slow walking um, a request from Israel for, am for ammunition, that uh, those people who shouted um, gas the Jews and these terrible clerics who speak clearly about murdering and hurting Jews, um, nothing's been done in this country. No, there's been no one deported, no one jailed. It is, it is crazy. And we're seeing this throughout the West. Um, we have the President of the United States uh, speaking about, um, we're thinking about imposing a Palestinian state on Israel, which is preposterous, mind-boggling. First of all, how dangerous it is to Israel, because it's just a launching pad to have the same thing that we have happened October 7th. And secondly, it's rewarding terror. Okay, you go and kill uh, 13, 1,400 Jews, as you did on October 7th, and you get rewarded with a state? That's preposterous. We know what that's going to bring, heaven forbid, is similar attacks against the entire West. Why? Because it works. It's a, you got to think the long bow. Is, does, does terror work or not? And even if the, the cause is right, which in this case it isn't, the very fact that the way to it was in such a, a terrible terrorist um, attack, that in itself should shut the, the, the avenue. So what do we see in our history in relation to this? In this week's Torah portion, we read about Jethro, Yisrael, coming to the Jewish people in the desert. And the Rashi asks the question, What did Yisra hear about? Because that's where the Torah starts. By Yishma Yisra, Yisra heard. What did he hear to make him want to come and join the Jewish people? And Rashi brings two things. One is the splitting of the sea and the war with Amalek. Now, the splitting of the sea makes sense. The Jews are on top of the world, show this incredible miracle of the splitting of the sea. So he comes to join them. Okay, goes a step further. Yisra actually was a priest to I to or worship all the idolatries of the world. In other words, he was a thinker. He was looking at a higher purpose. And because of that, he understood uh, by studying all the idolatries of the world. And um, what he saw in the splitting of the sea, in the miracles that happened to the Jewish people going out of Egypt, was a remarkable um, change from the way the world was seen until that time. You see, until that time, the way the religious, which was the entire world, saw the world is that there are uh, forces of good and forces of evil, forces of light and darkness, the, the God of water and the God of fire. And if you want to fight the God of water, the way you do so is with fire, not, not in any other way. Now, generally, human beings saw themselves as being little pawns and insignificant in the cosmic fights of these two, these warring gods and deities. And, um, and so, therefore, Egypt, to worship the, the water, the only way to fight them, you would think, was through fire. But nevertheless, what we saw is, and Yisra was part of it, as I'll soon say, that he knew about the decree of the Egyptians to throw the Jewish babies into the Nile River. And here, what happened is, measure for measure, that they themselves were drowned in the, in the sea. And uh, this was a departure from the way the world saw things. You didn't have to go and get the god of fire to fight the Egyptians, but actually the god that they worshipped, in that they were able to be destroyed, which told you that there's one god who's beyond fire, water, light, darkness. He's beyond it all, and he is in control of this world. And number two, he cares about us. We're not just a pawn in some cosmic uh, events of different... Uh, deities, but we're actually like a only child in the eyes of God. And if we do the right thing, it's because He has been kind to us. And if sometimes things don't happen the right way, it's because it's a wake-up call to us to look at, am I conducting myself in the proper way? Not that we're just some um, irrelevant 
pieces and the pathways of these uh, giant, uh, if you like, uh, cosmic gods. So the splitting of the sea told Yisrael that the Jewish perspective of life is the true perspective and therefore he came and joined us. But in addition to that, he saw, he heard about the the war of Amalek. Now the war of Amalek really did hurt us. It was a nation who came as we're leaving Egypt. We're on top of the world. We're invincible. The world is has full respect of us. And here this nation comes and kills some of us, mutilates them, and really takes away the shine from the way the world saw the Jewish people. And then Yisrael comes. Why does Yisrael come in our low point? You know, it's like today. Right after October 7th, we saw leaders of the world, Jewish, of the whole uh, world come to Israel, or many, many places in the world, uh, even as they have rolled back their unequivocal support for us. We see certain people, Douglas Murray, Nate Buzz, who come to and show incredible uh, morality and, 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 and clarity of vision and are there supporting Israel at this time. And it emboldens us. It makes us feel, uh, it makes many Jews feel, uh, feel good that there are some people in the non-Jewish world who, who, who could see things clearly and support us in this time of, of great need. I, I, was, uh, I was in the hospital of, uh, about a month ago or so and the doctor, one of the doctors that um, looked after me, said to me, you know, how he really feels for what's going on to the Jewish people and how much he supports us and he wants to help us. It was actually heartening to hear that. So this is why Yisrael came. Yisrael was a man of incredible morality. We find that when Parai um, schemed a decree against the Jewish people, he had three, he had three advisors. One was Bilam who advised him to throw the Jewish children to the Nile River. One was Eoiv, who knew that whatever he say would, Pari had made up his mind of what he wanted to do, so he just shut his mouth. And one was Yisrael, who denounced it and said, Pari, you cannot do that. So Bilam, who, who advised Pari to, to, do, to kill the Jewish children, was ultimately killed by the Jews. Eoiv went through a life of suffering because he didn't have the backbone to stand up to the wickedness of Pari. And Yisrael became the father-in-law of Moshe. He is the one who stood up for the Jewish people and his grandchildren and great-grandchildren became leaders of the Jewish people in the, San, in, the, in the Sanhedrin. So that's one positive point we see in Yisrael. Another area is where Yisrael was, as we said, a, 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 a priest to all, our, all of our, the idols. He became the leader in the country of Midian. And then he realized that there's uh, all these idolatries our, our foolishness. So he threw them out of his house. And because of that, the Midianites excommunicated him. They say no one should be a shepherd, no one should take care of any of his business dealings. And that's why when his daughters came to to um, water the sheep, the, the, the other shepherds kicked them away because they were persona non grata. Yisrael and his children were not accepted in, in Midian. And therefore Moshe comes and saves them. So we see the humanity of Yisrael, and then this Yisrael comes along to the Jewish people and says, I am with you. You're going through a hard time, I want to show you my support. And what that says is, on a very practical uh, level, is that it's important for our non-Jewish friends to show support for us today and this time when we are alone, when we're one sheep. And we know Hashem is our shepherd, He will protect us amongst all these 70 wolves. But it certainly is heartening when there's a Yisrael out there, when there are the Douglas Murrays, etc., out there who come and support us. Good job.